going on guys? Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. This video is not clickbait. I did quit the Curly Girl Method for approximately a month and a half now, and it has been a very interesting experiment. Yeah. I bet you thought that I would never be somebody coming on here saying that I quit the Curly Girl Method. Why? Because I am obsessed with the Curly Girl Method. My very first video I ever made for YouTube was a video where I tried the Curly Girl Method and I was so blown away by my hair that it really kind of motivated me to start this channel because I went from hating my hair and only being able to wear my hair super straight, that was like the only way that I thought it looked good at all, to having this like healthy, bouncy, curly hair that was easy. Like I could wash my hair all of a sudden, let it air dry, and it would look curly and it would look beautiful. So I was really impressed by the Curly Girl Method, so much so that I've been following it for almost four years now and I've been making videos and trying products and techniques and stuff for a really long time, all based around the Curly Girl Method. The first question that I think I have to answer is why? Why did I quit the Curly Girl Method? If the Curly Girl Method had been working for me so well for so long, why would I quit? Why would you try to fix something that isn't broken? Um, and I'm going to try to answer that question as quickly as possible. And the answer is basically curiosity and also like me just wanting to learn a little bit more about hair and hair products. So again, I've been following the Curly Girl Method forever. I'm a really like a big believer in no silicones and no sulfates. Not that I think that silicone damages your hair or anything like that, but that is just the sort of process and the products that work really well for me. I'm a big believer in either very low heat or no heat styling, and I'm definitely a believer in trying to use as little bleach and chemicals, like strong chemicals like that on your hair as possible. So that's kind of where I was and where I stand right now. Although I am not super strict on the rules, I have definitely been following the no silicones and no sulfates rule for, you know, almost four years, like I said. With the exception of going to a salon or going to my hairstylist, um, when I first started the Curly Girl Method, I felt like I couldn't use products with silicone in them or they were going to ruin my hair. Like I was totally like crazy about following the Curly Girl Method. So I would bring my own products to the salon. I don't do that anymore. But in my own house, in my shower, when I purchase products, I only use products that don't have silicone and sulfates. The other rules that I'm kind of strict about is I don't use heat. So even when I'm diffusing my hair, even though I know that you can get a tighter curl pattern, by using a little bit more heat. I use very little heat and I usually let my hair air dry either halfway or three quarters of the way and then I diffuse my hair a little bit. So everything that I do that fits in with the Curly Girl Method um, is all in order to keep my hair as healthy as possible and it keeps my curls defined. I know a lot of you who are watching this have a similar curl pattern to me. It's kind of a common curl pattern. It's like a loose wavy slash curly hair pattern. It's very fluffy. It's very prone to frizz. I call my curls fragile because they fall out super easily. Like if I run my fingers through my hair too much, um, my curl pattern kind of falls limp. If I use too much product, if I don't use the right products, I just don't get a nice curly result. And this is the way that I really like uh, to wear my hair on a daily basis. So anyways, um, if you're in that group and you've been following the Curly Girl Method for a long time, then you might find yourself like missing your old products or maybe your hair is healthy now and you're wondering if your hair would look better and shinier with a little bit of silicone in it or you're remembering, you know, like me, I always used to put John Frieda's Frizz Ease um, over top of my hair, especially after heat styling and my hair would look so shiny. And so I've just been really asking myself a lot of questions about whether the Curly Girl Method is the best for me or if it just helped me get my hair to a place where it was healthy and now I can kind of do whatever I want. And then I think about like Mains by Mel, for example. So I talk about Mains by Mel a lot on my channel. I watch her videos a lot because she's Canadian and I find her funny and she has like a tighter curl pattern, but her sister has like a looser wavy 
kind of pattern that's a bit more similar to mine. So I do really love their videos and they try a ton of different products. Um, but she's a professional stylist and I see how beautiful her hair is and her sister's hair is. And they use silicone and sulfate all the time. They're always switching up their products. They use their hair dryers on a high heat setting. Um, they basically do everything that I tell you guys not to do and they still have like a beautiful result. So am I wrong? Like, is the curly girl method maybe not that great? Um, how do I know unless I kind of try it now that my hair is curly and my hair is healthy? Maybe the curly girl method was what I needed to get me from wearing my hair straight all the time and straightening my hair and damaging my hair all the time and just having this frizzy, damaged, not curly, not wavy hair. Maybe I needed the curly girl method to get to this point where I have relatively healthy, naturally curly hair that I really love, but now that I'm here, would my hair look even better if I used a little bit of heat and if I started using more silicones and sulfates on my hair? So then the other thing that I just wanted to talk about is while I'm going through this experiment, I decided to watch a bunch of videos from other YouTubers who quit the curly girl method. And some of them were interesting. A lot of them, I kind of rolled my eyes. It was a lot of you know, women especially who had YouTube channels about other things and then when the curly girl method became really trendy, they tried it for a little while uh, and made videos about it and then it was trendy to quit the curly girl method and set, so then they were making videos about that. And for the most part, I just don't think that those people found products that were right for their hair. So they were saying things like it made their hair feel greasy, um, it made their hair look frizzy or their hair just wasn't curling properly. But really some of these people were people who had been straightening their hair religiously for like years. So you can't expect to get a good result until you trim a lot of that really heavily damaged hair off. And I just don't think they were willing to put the work in or maybe they just decided that they prefer what they look like with straight hair. And that is totally, totally okay but I just didn't feel like it was a good enough explanation of why you should or shouldn't follow the method. And then more recently, so I would say in the last like six months to a year, some of like the Curly Girl Method YouTubers have been quitting the Curly Girl Method. So like India Batson um, and Dana Marie posted a video recently and a couple of more. Um, and I don't have anything negative really to say about their videos. Um, and Dana Marie, I found her video really good because she was just like super real. She just said like, it's kind of easier for me to wear, wear my hair more wavy. I kind of like my hair a little bit more wavy. Um, and when I'm wearing my hair like that, the silicone makes my hair feel really good and I can like run my fingers through my hair. And she basically just said like, she really loves her hair curly, but she also likes her hair wavy. And right now she's using products with silicone in them and that's what's working for her. And then like kind of the same with India Batson. So she has wavy hair and she was finding that a lot of the products, the Curly Girl approved products were um, a little bit heavy on her hair. And even though she was getting definition, she had no volume. Um, and now she's wearing her hair in like a more voluminous style that has like looser waves. And again, whether you prefer that on her or not, or whether I do or not, that is your prerogative. But if that's the way that she likes to wear her hair, then I'll, I'm all for it. Um, but for me, I prefer to wear my hair curly or as curly as possible. And where I have that fragile hair pattern that my curls follow easily, um, I'm kind of watching their videos and saying, okay, like, that totally works for you to quit the curly girl method, but is my hair still going to be this curly if I quit? And the only way that I would be able to find out is if I actually did that. Oh my geez, do you think that's enough of a, an intro to the video? Most of you are probably like, okay, Susie, like just get to the point. And I'm getting there, I swear. Um, so a month and a half ago, like I said, I quit the curly girl method. So I basically started doing a lot of the things that Mains by Mal does and that worked for her. So I tried some of the products that she really likes. I also tried a line of Redken products that I always really liked. I tried some Amika products, which are products that my hairstylist really loves. 
and I had like some John Frieda frizzies and some drugstore products that I always loved that always worked on my hair and I've been kind of interchanging those products and trying different things. I also turn the heat up on my hair dryer a little bit because I am somebody who would like to have a bit more curl definition and I'm also thinking I'm using silicone on my hair now and a bit of a heat protectant so my hair can probably withstand a little bit more heat and also a lot of the ingredients in your hair creams and your styling products, especially those that contain silicone, just perform a lot better when you add heat to them. So when you're doing cold hair styling on your hair, and you guys might have noticed this, every once in a while you will get a mousse or a gel or something that just the ingredients in it don't really blend together or like emulsify well when you use cold water and cold settings on your hair dryer and you will end up with like little white clumps of different elements of those products in your hair. So like little, it looks like little clumps of creams or like uh, it almost looks like dandruff or flakes but you know that it's product. Sometimes the culprit is that you need a little bit of heat in order for those products to really smooth into your hair. Um, and so I was thinking about all that so I started using heat like I said and I started using all these products that I used to love and guys let me tell you the first time that I brushed my hair out all the way out and I shampooed my hair with that Redken shampoo that I always used and then I used the Redken conditioner again that smell that I'm obsessed with and then I used this here stuff this Redken anti-snap if any of you have ever used this like if you're somebody that uses silicones in your hair and you want something inexpensive, like I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed with the smell of it. It makes my hair feel really soft. It has a lot of protein in it and silicone. If you have somebody who has really damaged hair and you don't follow the curly girl method, for something that's relatively inexpensive, I mean, I'm sure some of you are gonna come on here and tell me that this is terrible for your hair, but I absolutely loved it. This video is not sponsored, 100% not. And Spoiler alert, I did end up going back to the curly girl method, um, but I really, really loved this product. So that first day when I shampooed and conditioned my hair and I used this, and then I just scrunched products into my hair. So I actually just used my regular um, gel that I always use, and then I used um, some of that John Frieda frizzies over top of my hair, and I scrunched my hair, and I blow dried my hair using heat. I wish that I took a picture or I had some kind of a video because my hair actually looked really awesome. It felt great. It was like a lot fluffier. I had more volume um, and I was super happy with it. And I thought, even in the back of my mind, I was thinking I probably won't ever quit the curly girl method completely because I know that like using silicones in your products isn't that great for the environment. And I have a lot of silicone free products that I really love. Um, and I love the hair products that I was using before so I was thinking I might not quit the curly girl method forever But I'm going to use this line of products for like a while and it's going to be awesome So then I'm just going to make a long story short and just tell you guys that as the weeks went on I found my hair started to look a little bit more stringy So like the bottom part of my hair looked a little bit more stringy and my roots looked a little bit more dry and I attributed that to me like just washing my hair a little bit too much with shampoo that had sulfate in it and maybe some of the silicone or some of the elements of the other products kind of building up on the bottom of my hair. The other thing that I noticed was because the products I was using had a lot of protein in them and the silicone my hair looked really shiny and it felt really healthy um, but it was a little bit stiff and fluffy and I had a hard time getting my hair to curl. So my hair just wasn't really responding to these products the same way that my hair responds to the curly girl method. I was still like scrunching them in and using the praying hands technique and doing all of that. Um, and my hair felt really strong and it looked shiny. It just wasn't as curly. So then I kind of relate it to India Batson and to Dana Marie and I thought, and I actually think India, I don't think she uses products with silicone in them often, but I just kind of relate it to that feeling of having hair that you can like run your fingers through and it's shiny and it feels strong and I and I really did like that. So again I'm not knocking silicones completely other than the fact that apparently they're a little bit harder on the environment um, but they just didn't help my hair to curl anymore and 
I prefer my hair curly. Now don't be judging my hair today because I didn't know that I was really shooting a video. So like I didn't get dolled up for nothing. I did put lipstick on, but like I just had no curl definition whatsoever. Um, the only thing that I really, really, really loved was that as my curls would fall out, so like my second, third, fourth day hair, my hair looked really wavy, so it barely looked curly at all. But because the silicone was in my hair, um, my hair looked really shiny. The other thing that I noticed, and I'm kind of all over the place here, was that using the hotter heat setting on my dryer did make my curl pattern a little bit tighter um, in the beginning before I feel like I was drying out my hair a bit too much by using too much sulfate. Now you can totally avoid this. Again, I'm not saying if you use sulfate and silicones in your products, you're gonna dry out your hair completely because then again, look at our girl Mains by Mel, like her hair and her sister's hair. Um, they have beautiful hair that's not dried out. They also only wash their hair like maybe once or twice a week with shampoo, um, so that definitely helps. But for me, when I was putting the silicone in my hair, in order for my hair to not look weighed down, I did have to shampoo my hair more often. Now, another thing that I learned was that it's not like, you know, they say that there's certain um, ingredients in your products that are water soluble and certain ingredients that aren't, and the ingredients that aren't are gonna build up on your hair if you don't use a shampoo that has sulfate in it. I feel like it's not as cut and dry as that. So again, I went like a whole week using products with silicone in them. I even co-washed my hair with a conditioner that had silicone in it. And I didn't feel like it built up on my hair until like, I don't know, a week or two later. So if I felt like it was starting to build up on my hair and then I washed my hair with a shampoo with sulfate in it at the end of that week, then that would take that build up out of my hair. Before I wrap this video up, I have like so many things that I feel like I learned over the last month or so, um, but to avoid me rambling on and on, I'm going to talk about them now quickly, sort of in point form. Using a higher heat setting on your hair dryer definitely helps with the styling process. So it reacts well with the different ingredients in your hair products and helps to smooth them throughout your hair. It also speeds up your drying time so that your curls have the opportunity to dry and form into curls that haven't been stretched out by the weight of your products in the water. The quicker I dry my hair, the curlier it is. Um, and so that all works really, really well. My only issue is that using a high heat setting on your hair dryer, especially if you're not using products that have silicone in them, is damaging to your hair. Over time, using a high heat setting on your hair dryer is more damaging to your hair than either letting your hair air dry or using a cooler setting. And so I choose to stick to using my hair dryer on a cooler setting um, and letting my hair air dry more often. Now, is using your hair dryer on a high heat setting at times that you are in a rush or you want your curls to be really tight or that you're using products that have silicone or something like that in them, um, no, it's not going to ruin your hair. You can do that every once in a while, but what I'm saying is that I will not be doing that um, on a routine basis. Using products that have silicone in them on a regular basis is not bad for your hair. It affects your curl pattern. Maybe it affects it in a positive way, maybe it affects it in a negative way. But for me and my loose curl to wavy hair type, my hair responds much better to products that don't contain silicones and don't contain a lot of oils and I've only found that through trial and error. I will definitely be going back to my products that have no silicones and no sulfates in them for a variety of reasons. Do I think that silicone builds up in your hair? Sort of. Do I think it happens after using it one or two times? No. Brushing my hair. So I was very open-minded about brushing because a lot of people are saying, and there is scientific theory to back this up, that your hair is stronger when it's dry. So if you take a very soft brush and you're gentle and you brush your hair out, um, starting at the ends and working your way up to the top gently before you wash and style your hair, then you're getting the best detangling um, your hair is stronger and therefore less likely to break and it's just overall better for your hair. When your hair is wet, it's a little bit more fragile and so if you're, especially if you're using a comb in the shower to get your tangles out, you can't hear the hair breaking, but it's breaking. So that's what they say. I actually believe all of that. 
um, but I'm still not going to be dry brushing my hair because it greatly affects my curl pattern. That's how fragile my curls are. So what I have decided, and some of you are going to be like, big shocker, Susie. <laughs> what I've decided is that I'm going to stick with the curly girl method and I'm going to continue to be curly girl method-ish. Yeah, and if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon in my next curly hair routine video. Bye. 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 Bye.